hard data on soft endpoints. Of course, for most patients, some of those aren't particularly soft endpoints, let me tell you that. But we're here to talk about patient-reported outcomes in hematology, and we have some information for you at the end of this program to make sure you end up in the right place on the internet. But before we get there, I want to introduce you to Dr. Ellen Werner, who is a PhD at the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and a program director in the Blood Epidemiology and Clinical Therapeutic Branch at NHLBI. Hello. First off, thank you very much for your time. Thank we're you. all familiar with quality of life metrics. What are patient-reported outcomes, or pros? Okay, pros are quality of life instruments that include the traditional quality of life domains such as physical, emotional, and social functioning. But they're developed slightly differently to uh, include new measures in using psych psychometrics and advanced technology. So for example, the classic way that instruments were developed to assess quality of life were scales. And you might have a 10 or 20 item scale and the validations and reliability statistics were derived on the entire scale. So if you wanted to ask people about their physical functioning, you had to use the entire scale. That increased the respondent burden and made it very difficult in clinical practice and clinical research to ask everything that needed to be asked. With these new measures now, we use item response theory and computer adaptive testing. So in fact, the psychometric properties are embedded in each item and an investigator can use one or, or several items and doesn't have to use the entire scale. So the investigator can focus in on exactly those issues that are important for the research purpose. So it's gonna be a lot of the same things that we've thought about in the past, but it's kind of a new twist on it and it's gonna make things simpler and easier to study. Yes, and more informative. We, the other thing is that with this new method, really you get the full spectrum of disease. And during today's talk, Dr. Dave Sala showed uh, visually with graphics how the SF36 really gave a truncated view of fatigue measures so that patients experiencing fatigue had, very, uh, had a very short range of answers. And on another instrument, it gave a little bit larger range, but still it didn't cover the whole population of interest. And by integrating many of these measures from various, what we call legacy instruments, those that existed in the past, we can really focus in and cover the full spectrum of disease severity. So it becomes more focused for the patients who have severe disease, or they can also be, um, those measures can also be used in the general population to characterize healthy people. Now we know what pros are, so what is the Patient Reported Outcomes Measurement Information System? All right, this was part of a research resource that was developed by the NIH starting in about 2004. It was part of the Roadmap Initiative mm -hmm. uh, designed to improve the clinical research enterprise. Because there were so many quality of life and other measurement, other instruments, uh, we really needed to make them more uh, focused, make them more available, really needed to what we call bin and winnow. That is, put them all together, winnow down, and make sure that they worked for the general population and clinical populations, both in terms of validations and reliability. Give me an example of how this would work in, in say, either a research or clinical okay. setting. The fatigue measures that Dr. Sella discussed today can be used in various patient populations, including rheumatoid arthritis, uh, cancer patients on chemotherapy, uh, children with sickle cell disease, and they're going to have different properties to their responses. They'll, they'll come up with different results. And so for comparative studies, it's very important to determine the burden of disease. But also if you want to intervene, if you want to use a drug to test so the efficacy so you know what happens, you can intervene testing a drug and over time track the change. Is that change in fatigue sensitive to the drug? Does the drug work, in other words, to reduce fatigue in, in the patient population? So it kind of sounds like we need to rethink when we're designing a trial we need to rethink some of the questions and then how we measure 
what we're coming up with, how, yeah. what we're asking. I can't speak for the FDA, but I will tell you that the FDA has been a partner in developing and disseminating information about PROs. And in fact, Ginny Kwiatkowski's presentation today included a lot of websites and resources that are available to investigators. And I would recommend anybody interested in clinical trials look at those because the FDA staff is available to meet with investigators both before submitting an IND and, of course, during the IND process so that the PROS instrument uh, are really accepted as measurement tools for the outcomes of interest in that particular study. Well, looking online, it appears there are currently more than a dozen studies underway implementing PROMISE tools. Yes. That's pretty good. Yes. It, it, well, when you consider that we started PROMISE, the development phase, in 2004, yeah. and the Adult Sickle Cell Quality of Life Measurement Information System in 2005, it's taken about 10 years to really develop, validate, launch, and get these instruments and the related materials disseminated. And there really has been, I think, a sea change in understanding among the clinical investigators about how to measure these quality of life domains. Because it used to be, let me just take this off the shelf SF36 or off the shelf facet. And I think people are more sophisticated. They understand the need for a more focused uh, outcome rather than what they would get from those other instruments. And if you're going to move these into clinical trials, you need to have that focus and you need to have yes. the tools. Right, again, not speaking for the FDA, but right. does, uh, does the fatigue change over time in response to the drug? Right. Does the pain change in response to the drug? And those are soft endpoints, but they're of importance to the patient. That is correct. They might not be the primary endpoints in a clinical trial. They might be secondary, but that's where the FDA staff can guide the investigator and the interested sponsor or industry. So where can researchers and clinicians get more information about Promise? There's also Ask Me, which is a great one, and other NIH-funded pro tools. All right, we have a lot of information on our websites, and I believe you're going to show the URLs for Absolutely. those. Absolutely. One is nihpromise.org. Yes. And, there, and the other is? Healthmeasures.net. Which is new. It's new, yes. It incorporates all of the NIH-funded PROS instruments. And uh, I also want people to be sure to look at the FDA resources that were on Ginny Kwiatkowski's um, slides today. Well, this is a great topic, and I thank you for a few minutes of your time here, because please check online, uh, check out those two places. The URLs are available for you here right on the video. And of course, look in uh, Ash Clinical News. I am Rick McGuire. <laughs>